This episode is brought to you by Raycon. Initiating moisture. When the first trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog dropped, it was love at first sight for me. I was expecting a beautifully entertaining disaster on the same level of the great something like food fight. And then they announced that they were going to completely redesign Sonic due to the backlash, and then they actually made a competent looking Sonic, which is what we have in the movie today. And I will say, that single decision in the redesign saved the movie. The movie's actually pretty good. But if you think about the version 1.0, and I swear to god they need to release the fucking 1.0, I will pay for another ticket just to go see it in its original form. Because the original Sonic, for those that don't remember, looked like a sex offender in a fursuit. And when you watch this movie and just picture that original abomination sitting there talking to the characters, interacting, making the jokes it does, my god, the movie falls apart. It more than falls apart, honestly, that's an understatement. It would be annihilated, pissed, and shit on. If they kept that original design in this movie with some of these scenes, it would look like a porn parody instead of a family-friendly Sonic movie. So hats off to Moving Picture Company, the animation studio behind Sonic's redesign. They actually saved the entire franchise. This probably would have been the final nail in Sonic's coffin in the public eye. And it saved Sega the most embarrassing disaster since the Sega Genesis. So they should really be sucking Moving Picture Company's dick or their ass or something, but they can't because Moving Picture Company has closed its doors because animation studios, visual effects artists, they don't get paid what they deserve, so the entire studio had to close, which means the Sonic redesign is their swan song. That's a whole different can of worms, but hats off to the people behind the redesign. It actually saved the movie. Like I said, the movie's pretty good. It's not bad, it's generic, and it's very clearly for kids, and it does really well in that area, I imagine. Kids loved it, people in the theater with their kids, they were having a great time. And it's not bad, it doesn't hurt to sit through, it's not a, like a painful experience, but it very clearly is aimed at a younger demographic. Sonic flosses twice, and it's not just quick flosses, he does like a whole flossing routine. They make it clear who their target audience is. There are a couple of little humdingers that they throw in there that are actually kind of clever jokes. And I think Jim Carrey is extremely strong in the movie. But overall, all the humor, all the comedy, and all the pacing is really meant for a younger audience. Which, that's no big deal. It's a Sonic movie, you kind of expect that. Not saying Sonic fans can't be adults. I, I know you're out there jerking off the Sonic hentai and shit. I get it. That shit's been around since the invention of the internet. I'm very familiar. I'm saying this movie in particular is geared for a younger audience, so you might not find prime masturbatory material in this one. There are some really cool moments in the movie, though, I'd say, and especially when it comes to their fighting. It's not exactly fighting. Don't go in there expecting some, like, you know, raid or Ip Man-style choreography or anything like that, but when it comes to their fights, I like what they do with Sonic's speed and to give you a sense of just how fast he is. They do, and this isn't a spoiler, they do what they did in X-Men to show Quicksilver, where time stands still and they interact with the world in slow motion while they're still going fast and they change things around and then all speeds up at once and you get to see this chaos that unfolds. That's Sonic's signature move and it really looks cool on screen. I'm kind of a sucker for that shit because I think it's just really nice to look at and I really think it's, it's creative. Uh, so I do respect that and I like the way they did the action and the chemistry between Sonic and the main character Tom, well he's not really the main character, they, they share equal screen time. When one's on screen, the other's on screen, fucking fisting each other and shit, knuckling each other, not actually fisting again, it's not that kind of Sonic movie. They're, they're together a lot, and Tom and him have great on-screen chemistry, not that I think Sonic is real, like they hired the real Sonic as the actor, but the dialogue between them is cute, is what I'm saying. It, there's... There's really nothing wrong with the movie. There's nothing great about the movie. I think it's pretty forgettable unless you were a real hard Sonic fan, which I know a lot of people are. I think it does the character justice. And really, this is probably the best they could have done with opening a Sonic the Hedgehog universe. I think it was well done. They had an origin. They had, you know, the introduction to these characters, beloved ones such as Robotnik and Sonic. It's just... I think they did everything they needed to do and they did it well enough. Really surprising because I expected this to be a lot worse than it was. Even setting aside how awful the original design looked, and, and when I say awful, I mean beautifully awful. I, if you haven't seen the original Sonic the Hedgehog design that they released with this, do yourself a favor. Imagine like your creepy uncle in one of those mascots outside of a used game store twirling a sign and, you know, having a fucking heat exhaustion. That's the kind of costuming and the kind of character that they had in the original Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know what the fuck went on with that CGI, but Christ, it was beautifully awful. But setting that aside, I still expected the movie to be bad because... 
that's how they envisioned Sonic and it looked like shit. Well, how else did they envision the story and, you know, everything else along with it, not just the design? I thought it was all going to be super misguided and shitty, but it wasn't. It was fine. Plugging Sonic the Hedgehog into the moist meter, giving this bad boy a crisp 60%. Again, pretty good movie. I don't think it was anything more than generically good. It didn't have anything impressive to offer or anything in that regard, but I do think Sonic fans and just younger audience members are probably going to really enjoy the movie. And I think that's what it was really aiming to do, so it accomplished its goal. You already know what time it is. It's time to give you something to jerk off about. We're talking about Raycons again, baby. The wireless earphones of the future. I've talked about them numerous times by now. You already know I use them every time I go to the gym because you can't have wires dangling in front of your fucking face and ruining your reps because you have wires or yanking them out of your ears and shit. So when you're doing these reps and anything that requires physical activity, these wires are very intrusive. And, you know, for me personally, my flawless technique at the gym, I can't be distracted by that kind of hindrance, which is why you've got to go wireless, and Raycon is the best option for that. They sound just as amazing as other premium audio brands, but come at a lower price point. They also just came out with their newest model, the E25, six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, compact, all the bells and whistles. So if you're interested, click the link in the description to get 15% off your Raycon order. I highly recommend them as I have multiple times in the past. So again, 15% off if you click the link in the description. So yeah.